Casey's public service announcement for dudes in the car world. Be nice to girls in car world. Durr. And Paul came up and said, awesome Maserati, it's Taylor and Casey. Man, this is sort of like pride and prejudice in the car world mixed with just like a touch of sexism. Interesting, but not cool. <laughs> KW makes the perfect suspension for every demand. Find them in the description below. What's up, people? Well, today I want to talk about an interesting experience I had this weekend and how I think it relates on the car community and the car world, especially how that relates to women who are car enthusiasts, car owners, etc. Now, you always say, you, you know, you got to walk a mile in a man's shoes. Well, you kind of got to walk a mile in a woman's shoes, which is way more difficult because they've got some funky heels which I should probably, hey, comment below if you wanna see me do a toe heel driving video in high heels. I think that's ridiculous and interesting and we'd all learn something here, but I digress. So many of you know that my wife fairly recently bought her first exotic car she likes very much. It's a 2008 Maserati Gran Turismo. It's white with a red interior and we recently, I did the X-Pipe for her. She changed her own oil. We got some neat wheels, put them on and it's a wonderful car and she loves it and she's really proud of it. So. This past weekend, we went down to Columbus, thought we'd get together with my, my old Cars and Coffee crew there. I went to Midwestern Auto Group where it was, real fun time, and we took her car. Um, I didn't really want to drive two cars out of town because we were going to do kind of weekend fun trip things, and her Maz is very comfortable to ride around in. Um, and, you know, we'll share driving duties, things like that, but I told her, I'm like, we're going to Cars and Coffee, it's your car, you're the one driving in, I do not want to go in and get any credit for it because people will think it's either my car or I'm the one just doing it and it's not her car of her enjoyment. So I wanted her to drive in and take credit for it, but she was being all bashful and didn't want to do it because she's like, well, people are going to be watching me when I have to back into space. I'm like, you're cool, it's the same as if there's nobody there, just it'll be fun, everybody will love it. Well guys, obviously a big thanks to Policy Genius because when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. But more importantly than that, my wife Taylor and I have actually been using this company for the last two years before they were ever part of a sponsor from this channel. So I hope you'll give them the time of day because on average, they're saving their clients $1,250 a year on their home and auto insurance. Basically how it works is that Policy Genius works as a broker or a marketer. So they go out there, out to bat for you to compare all of the top brands, policy, insurance companies to find you the best rates, period. So guys, what you need to do, same thing I did. Oh no, because my wife was smart and told me what to do and now I'm being smart and telling what you what to do. So go to policygenius.com forward slash Casey, C-A-S-E-Y, very important, uh, and check it out. They'll get started, get right on the team for you, know what you and your life is about for your home and auto insurance needs and make that happen. So obviously guys, big savings coming up. So I got her to do that and she was happy and uh, we're rolling in uh, earlier and the guy that runs it, Paul, was super nice uh, and he came up and this was kind of a really nice moment for her as a car enthusiast and just person. And Paul came up and said, awesome Maserati, it's Taylor and Casey. And it was just a little thing, but Paul said her name first because her car, she's rolling in, she's the driver and I'm just sitting in there riding B, you know what I mean? But that was cool because I'm the longer term car guy, the more, you know, internet famous one or whatever. And I've gone to the cars and coffee for years and years and everybody knows me, but Taylor gets the credit. And I thought that was really cool of Paul putting on that event and why I think that events are going to go a lot of people. But that's not really the case that I started to see out there in the normal public with car enthusiasts and such. So let me get into this. And by the way, I'm not going to knock or dig on cars and coffee. That car was totally cool. It's kind of just something that I perceived and I'm like, Man, this is sort of like pride and prejudice in the car world mixed with just like a touch of sexism. Interesting, but not cool. So Cars and Coffee was cool. We had fun. People saw our car. They liked it. She got Some people took pictures and tagged us in it, whatever, like they do. But before we went down there, you know, obviously my wife would be out driving her car and stuff. And typically when I drive one of my cars, um, whether somebody recognizes me from internet or they just see the car for the first time, you know, people be like, nice car, love it, great, that's cool, looks, you know, thumbs up, stuff like that with, you see with car enthusiasts. And actually something weird I noticed with my old white Porsche 944 with the martini sticker, it was really strange because I've had women come up to me and compliment that car, which is not normal for most cars but so my wife driving around she would go to the grocery store or just out and about wherever it is shopping going to post office something like that and i asked her do you ever get any compliments people thumbs up and whatnot and she asked she said no i usually ha have guys glaring at me when i get out 
I'm like, are you sure about that? Like, are you just thinking that? Cause you're kind of self-conscious cause you're driving a flashy car now. And she's like, no, they just kind of glare at me. And I'm like, all right. So I, I sort of paid attention to that. And she didn't mention that anybody complimented her car other than, you know, the neighbors or people we know are nice people, but just out there in general. So when we were in Columbus for Cars and Coffee, had a lot of fun. And then we left and you know, we're gonna go out, we're gonna go to restaurants, we're gonna go shop and we're gonna go, you know, do a couple things over a weekend, right? And regardless of where we went, you'd hear people talking uh, or people would say about the car. And even one time we're in High Street, short north area, walking around uh, of Columbus, kind of downtown. And somebody else drove by in a white Maserati Gran Turismo, different car. And a bunch of people on the street, you heard them say Maserati, stuff like that. So people do notice funny cars, even if I don't think they do. But when I was driving, this happened once at the hotel we were staying at. We got out and there were people there. Um, and then another time in a motorcycle dealership parking lot and a couple of times just out and about wherever. But so we get out of the car at the hotel. It's later in the evening and we're getting out and there was like a whole family over there and they're like, hey man, nice car. I like the Maserati and the wheels. And now the first thing I said is, thanks, but it's her car because I am not about to take any credit for a car that's not mine. Even though my wife's counting me into driving, I would rather ride. It's like, honey, drive your car. I'm trying to make you want to do this so I don't have to drive. <laughs> it's not going to work. But anyway, so I did that. And, um, but the guy kept talking to me. They, even though there was like a whole family and there were some women there, they didn't like direct the conversation, the compliments to her. They kept talking to me. It's like, that's really cool. I like the wheels. I'm like, yeah, man. But like her car, she changed the oil and everything. And they never directed the conversation to her. Like it's her car. It's kind of like, you know, and we were just kind of walking because I'm not trying to draw attention or anything, but I sort of noticed that first. But then the other thing I noticed was there was a number of times that weekend that some of you like, hey, it's an awesome car. I'd be like, actually, it's my wife's or it's her car, you know, et cetera. And not one of those times did the person say anything to her um, or even like look at her. They just kind of looked at me and said it. And then the one time we went to Iron Pony, which is an enormous like motorcycle superstore, biggest one in the country of like, you know, safety gear and riding gear and bikes and stuff like that and service and all. And we're coming out and Maserati Gran Turismo is kind of a flashy like luxury car, which isn't the norm in a motorcycle dealership parking lot. You know, you're usually going to get like, yeah, dudes, you know what I mean? Like not a fancy luxury car kind in there, but you get all kinds, of course. And so we go to get in the car and there's this uh, middle-aged gentleman walking by, seemed kind of nice, like, you know, maybe came from the vintage bike races in mid-Ohio. And he goes, Maserati, all right, you don't see too many of those, nice car. And like, he just enjoyed it as a genuine car enthusiast. It wasn't anything about like the exotic world or flex. And I'm like, well, thanks man, but it's my wife's car. And she's like, right there, right next to me looking. And he's like, yeah, I really like, and kept talking to me. And that's all right. But I was like, of all the times people said something about the car, even when I was deflecting it, like, here you go, this person standing right here, this is her car, I'm gonna go away now. They didn't even like, not once direct the compliment to her or like try to give her a thumbs up. They just kept it at me or kept going with it. And that was so bizarre to me because it's not my car. But it kind of dawned on me afterward it's because I'm a guy. Um, cars and sports cars, exotic cars, motorcycles, etc., are classically a male dominated world. That's very much a male thing to do. Let's be honest, this channel right now is a 97.5% sausage fest. Yes, or at least that's what the demographics say. Um, and that's just natural. That's kind of the way the car world is. I mean, it's kind of like engineering. Look, if you want to pick up chicks in college, don't go into mechanical engineering, okay? Go into like nursing or veterinarian school or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's things that men like and there's things that women classically like. And we live in a funny time where, you know, like we don't want to admit that, but also we live in a funny time because we're also very entrenched in that and it's weird. Uh, but with this regard, I think it's kind of important. And this is like Casey's public service announcement for dudes in the car world. Be nice to girls in car world, duh. If you've got like this kind of funny feeling because a woman has a car that you like or admire and want, don't immediately interpersonally like hate on her or not want to engage that person uh, in conversation about the car or not feel okay with paying a compliment to that person because what you're thinking may not be true. 
it's cool if women are into cars and I think we need to, as men, be a little less standoffish or prideful or having prejudice, like, you know, like literally pride and prejudice of the cars world. <laughs> um, I think we need to be a little more open and just cognizant of that, the fact that we're ingrained with this of a male dominated thing. So just be cool. Um, and yeah, you can judge for yourself whether they're car people or not or whatever. Um, but at least give that person the credit of potentially being a true car enthusiast and like it, and maybe somebody that you would enjoy engaging in conversation with. And I think that's just gonna be more welcoming and more fun. Um, yeah, it's something I didn't really realize because let's be honest, there's not many women in the car world, so we don't get that opportunity, but it's something I think we should just think about. We don't have to freak out, but let's just be cool and look at ourselves and how we engage um, to engage normal. Um, that's easier said than done for men. Yes, I'm well aware. But um, I did notice that. I uh, didn't really detract from my wife and she doesn't really like the attention anyway uh, necessary. But um, it kind of made me a little sad for her because I hope that when she's out enjoying the car that she worked hard to be able to buy and then also has put in sweat equity working on or building that she can enjoy it out in public just like any car guy or car gal can um and be fun um but haters gonna hate screw them but anyway just kind of want to bring that up guys just a little social thing not a, not a rant um not crying about something uh, it was just something i had a dude realization about that i think we should be cooler about so that's it please subscribe below builds coming up racing crazy things also tips etc driving tips a lot of things also hit that bell because i think this is the best channel on youtube uh, actually, it's not. I recently found something called Thug Notes. Look it up. It's awesome. <laughs> the dude talks about classic literature in a very fun, relatable way. But uh, yeah, you should totally subscribe to my channel too. That's all I got. Uh, it is a fun community of cars for men and women alike, and I hope we're cool to everybody. Catch you later. Well, a huge thank you to Crush Proof Tubing Company. Since 1949 in Macomb, Ohio, they've been manufacturing custom rubber and plastic tubes for every industry imaginable. No tooling or mold costs, fast and free custom samples, and American-made quality is what sets them apart. But for me, I'm most excited about their exhaust evacuation kit. Different modular pieces and their convoluted custom hoses make it so that I can adapt any car, truck, or motorcycle with an internal combustion engine to get those exhaust gases out of my shop so I can keep working in safety and comfort. But beyond just that, they build a variety of hoses for a custom OEM world. You'll see stretchable drain tubing and bellows, as well as agriculture, medical, and military. So again, guys, Crush Proof Tubing Company, crushproof.com, and go down in the description below to see where to get your free samples for industry or your exhaust tubing.